Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Wealth and Wisdom. Today, we're discussing a fascinating historical topic, the market economy, early Islam. This is a subject that holds valuable lessons for entrepreneurs of the future. Let's dive in. Anyone wants to know what to do with the money they make. If one lives in a city with a bull market in property, often the sensible decision would be to buy a property. This is not a new investment strategy, it was already tried and tested in a city in the 7th century that had a bull market in property. This city was in Arabia called Medina, or the Prophet's city. Here the leader of the community told anyone who had sold a property the following advice. He who sells a house and does not buy another one is not likely to see a blessing in that money. This was very straightforward investing advice. If you sell a property keep the money in another property. This advice came from none other than the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Prophets who give investment advice are in the minority. It would probably never have occurred to anyone to ask Jesus or Buddha what to do with their savings. But for Muhammad, peace be upon him, giving investment advice was in keeping with how he conceived his office. This is because Islam is a religion that tells Muslims what to do in every sphere of life, including in business. Muhammad, peace be upon him, knew a great deal about money, and about investing. He was a merchant by profession, and had taken part in trade caravans. By the time he had founded his community in Medina he was in his early fifties. By then he had some four decades of business experience behind him. In this video we will discuss how Islam a religion that was founded by an entrepreneur also marked the advent of capitalism in its most pristine form. First in Medina then in Arabia, and then the realm under the Islamic Empire, and later Europe. First, I like to clear what I mean when I say capitalism. This is a word we use so often you would think everyone agrees on its meaning. You might think you can find the definition of the word in the works of the two economists who are most closely associated with defining capitalism, Adam Smith and Karl Marx. But Adam Smith never used the term. And in all the works of Karl Marx the word capitalism appears only in a handful of places. You have to look at a sociologist Max Weber to find out the definition of capitalism. He defines it as a mode of organizing society. It is not about building factories, offices, or division of labor. What makes capitalism distinctive, said Max Weber, is an attitude of individuals who want to produce and manufacture with a view to selling and making a profit in the long run. Capitalism is a particular mental attitude. But what made this happen and when this attitude first appeared in history is still under disagreement. The Greeks and Romans built great empires but no notion of capitalism. Greek and Romans left rich literature, but no economic literature of note. Max Weber had a suggestion for who originated capitalism. He suggested it was the Protestants and his example was Benjamin Franklin. When Benjamin Franklin said, time is money, he defined capitalism in a nutshell. Max Weber met with opposition to this explanation, people said capitalism existed before Protestantism. For example, in places such as Venice. So, when capitalism began the jury is out. With this historical explanation, let's come back to Islam and Muhammad and his career in business. Muhammad, peace be upon him came from a long line of entrepreneurs and was a merchant himself. He lost most of his wealth in Mecca when he met with opposition to his religion. But in Medina he flourished, and society flourished with him. This is another aspect of Muhammad, peace be upon him, that separates him from Jesus and Buddha peace be upon them. They died poor. 
but Muhammad, peace be upon him, by the time he died was the richest person in all of Arabia. A quick biography of Muhammad, peace be upon him, is as follows. His father died before he was born. As a teenager he made a living as a shepherd. At the age of 25 he married Khadija, a lady of means. After his opponents forced him out of Mecca, he established himself in Medina. And within 10 years he had united Arabia under the banner of Islam. The story of religion and trade in Mecca did not begin with Muhammad. From the very beginning of Mecca's history, civic life revolved around the sanctuary of the Kaaba. Towards the middle of the 5th century the tribe of Quraysh gained guardianship of the Kaaba. From then on two families were the guardians of the Kaaba, the Umayyads and the Hashemites. The Hashemites took their name from a certain Hashim. He was a merchant and a trade diplomat. He struck agreements with foreign states and the Bedouin in the desert, to enable travel through the desert to become risk-free. Consequently, caravan trading became more profitable. Hashim had a notable son Abdul Mutalib. Abdul Mutalib led the Meccans in negotiations when they warded off a foreign attack. Muhammad, peace be upon him, comes from their lineage. When Muhammad started his ministry and urged his compatriots to step forward and reform religion, trade, and civic life, they were listening to someone whose lineage had been shaping religion, trade, and warfare in Mecca for the last 150 years. Muhammad was at the age of 40 when he began in his mission to spread Islam. We will now focus upon his business career up until that time. Muhammad had to pay his way in life. His father had died before he was born, his mother died when he was six. He did not inherit a large estate. But he did inherit an asset which was invaluable in making a career. His family had excellent connections to Mecca's merchant elite. He was in his mid-twenties when his uncle introduced him to Khadija bint Khalid, one of Mecca's wealthiest investors. Khadija did business with Muhammad and then later married him. Muhammad was the first to unite the Arabs into a single state. But when he set up his own community in Medina, he did not proclaim it to be a state. What he did in Medina was to establish two institutions that always became the central point of public life in every Muslim city. That was a mosque and the market. When Muhammad arrived in Medina there already were four markets. When he decided he wished to set up a new one, local residents tried to stop him. But Muhammad persisted, and he inaugurated his market by declaring to his adherents. Let this be your market, and let no tax be levied on it. Muhammad wanted this market to be big, it was large enough so that a saddle of a camel placed in the center of the market could be seen from the periphery. Moreover, he set a fiscal incentive to attract business by declaring that the market trade would be tax-free. No surprise that merchants and other markets were not very enthusiastic about a new competitor. When Muhammad set a fiscal incentive on his market that was keeping with his general approach to management. Muhammad set numerous fiscal provisions and was very interested in tax policy in whatever he did. A good example is from one of his military campaigns. Muhammad set salaries for all the warriors who followed him. Those soldiers who were equipped with a horse were entitled to triple the salary of the soldiers in the infantry. One of the reason Muhammad's armies were so successful is because he soon fielded a large cavalry. Join us for part 2 in the next video. Assalamu alaikum.